Hey everybody, welcome to episode 7 of Let's Preview Elite Dangerous Premium Beta 2.02. .02. I just heard news earlier today on the forums that um, the single player combat has been released. So you're probably not going to see this video for another week or so. Anyway, as of the airing of this video, about a week ago, single player combat has been released to all beta members. So, um... People are getting used to going through those scenarios. I figured it was probably a pretty good time to talk about two rather interesting topics. Those being um, <clears throat> damaging of subsystems and also managing your signature. So, and I'm not talking about your digital signature like, you know, what you might use to sign a CD or anything. <clears throat> I'm talking about your ship's radiation signature or, or heat signature. So I am getting myself set up in a uh, ambush position. So what I'm going to be looking for is ships that are leaving the station heading towards Allen and uh, I'm going to ambush them. But um, because it's kind of cheesy right now um, uh, and there's not a lot of crime and punishment implemented in the game. All I'm really going to do is shoot at, shoot at them a little bit and maybe bring down their shields uh, <clears throat> and send them running away intact. But the first step is to get in position. So here I've positioned myself basically five kilometers away from the station. This would be um, within detection range, actually, of most ships. They might still be able to identify me as a radar contact at this point, but... If I change my radar signature, that rapidly becomes much harder. So, let me see if I can't zoom in on it like this. <clears throat> right there in the center of my screen is a little bandwidth sort of thingy indicating my current signature. That's the sort of a representation of all the bands of radiation that my ship is currently giving off and how strong they are. So... What I really want to do is I want to make that smaller. There are a few things that contribute to that. First of all, one thing that contributes is all of your ship's power usage. Anything that's turned on um, basically is detectable in that signature. For instance, if I turn off drives, you can sort of see a quick change in, in the signature. Turn it back on. <clears throat> you can bar barely see it. The other thing that determines that signature is how hot your ship is. So the percentage graph just to the left of the scanner is actually showing um, the current, basically current uh, temperature threshold of my ship. 100% is, you know, as, as, as hot as my ship is going to get before I start risking damage. If I get that part nice and cool, like so, Turn off the engines, I will turn off life support temporarily, turn off the cargo hatch, turn off my sensors. That's about all I can turn off right now. <clears throat> so, with those systems turned off, you can rapidly see that my ship is beginning to cool off. And um, there we go. We are now at 0% uh, heat. So now if you take a look at the signature, you can see it's nearly a straight line. I have very little signature right now. So I'm going to turn some things back on. Okay. My engines are off and my... Um, automated field maintenance kit <clears throat> is off right now. So uh, at this point, just sitting here, I am generating less heat than I'm radiating out into space. Which means my ship's total temperature stays really low. And if you look at my signature over there, it's also staying pretty small. Uh, this actually, you can kind of magnify the difference with the engines on and off. So that's what it looks like with the engines on. Or off. That's what it looks like with the engines on. Immediately the signature goes up a lot. Of course, with my engines off, my ship is hardly maneuverable at all, but that doesn't make a difference because I am laying in wait. 
as soon as I see another ship <clears throat> that I'd like to plunder, I will pop on the engines and attack them. Okay, we've got a hauler flying our direction. So as soon as he gets within, um, he's never going to know I'm here unless he gets too close. And now we turn our engines on, deploy our hard points, and go get him. So he probably never even knew that I was here. And he's trying to warp out right about now. But he can't, because I'm not going to let him. Now normally, if I was a true pirate, I would go like this target his cargo hatch and see if I can't open him up. Alright, I don't want to cause too much damage to that poor schmuck, so I'm going to get out of here. <clears throat> but as you can see, an ambush like that, I could have totally just, you know, completely taken him out. Now, you notice that right now, my ship is running quite hot, which means I can be detected from a pretty far range away. And now that I'm wanted in the system, I definitely do not want that to be the case. So, we're just going to sneak into the city. In order to do that, I'm going to build up a little bit of speed. I'll go ahead and ask for clearance to land right now. Request granted. Turn off flight assist. Turn off our engines. Deploy a heat sink to cool off, and you notice our signature is falling down as we cool off. Retract my weaponry. And we are now basically invisible. People won't detect us until they get to um, about a thousand, a thousand meters or so. I'm just going to fly into the thing and clear my wanted. Now that I am in a no-fire zone, anyone who fires on me is going to be in serious trouble. So, <clears throat> re-enable flight assist, and just fly in. We're just going to set down really quick. Okay, since I was wanted, as so if I was flying around, Excuse me, taking another glass of water. It's hot in here. If I was want, uh, since I'm wanted, as I was flying around, anyone could have scanned me and received a message that I had a local bounty, which um, would have been problematic for me. I could probably take most people. You know, <clears throat> another cobra or an eagle might really give me trouble. So, I'd rather just get that taken care of. Contacts, Pilots Federation. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to fly off to an unidentified signal source. And this time, I wanted to show you guys targeting subsystems. Specifically, I should be able to find, if I get lucky with this instance, <clears throat> I should be able to find an anaconda that's under attack or ready to be under attack and what I really want to do is attack its cargo bay doors if I can hit its cargo bay doors and I have some precision weaponry designed just for that um, if I can hit its cargo bay doors then it will start spilling out cargo that I can pick up for free but the first step is to get there So coming up on the identify, unidentified signal source here pretty soon. I hope I find uh, one of the um, random encounters you can get at this, at this particular signal source is a Federation <clears throat> um, Anaconda, which is wanted because it's in Aranin space. And because it's wanted, that means that you can attack it without gaining a bounty. Aha, bingo. All right, so that anaconda is under attack. 
soon as I can target it. We'll go to sub-targets and hit its cargo hatch. Now, I happen to have brought a special weapon just for this occasion. I want to keep myself flying more or less parallel to the thing. Deploy hard points. Here we go. As soon as my lasers lock on. Perfect. So I have gimbaled lasers, and I just want to hit that cargo hatch. The cargo hatch has been hit enough where it is actually putting off um, cargo. So, full in, full power to shields, some to engines, and we'll go start <coughs> collecting. And we need to slow down to a certain point. <clears throat> Aaron and security service is going to make pretty quick work of the rest of these guys. <clears throat> I don't need to worry about that. Whoa, that was a big chunk of lag. Okay, so on the left side of my scanner you can see I'm using this little targeting reticle. I don't know where all this lag is coming from. I'm using a target reticle on the left side of my scanner to help me line up my cargo scoop with the stuff that I want to pick up. Now it just so happens that this anaconda was loaded full of gold, which I love. I don't know why it says I'm wanted. Local status wanted. Oh well. That's fine. Pirate's life for me. So on the left side of my scanner, I'm using this reticle uh, that only comes up when your cargo scanner is open. <clears throat> and um, helps you line up with the stuff that you're trying to... Trying to grab. And I will grab as much as I can until... I need to boost my way out of here. <laughs> smashed into that one. So you can see there's still a firefight going on out there between all the parties concerned and <clears throat> I am just uh, you know a thief of opportunity. As long as there is stuff for me to pick up I'm gonna keep on picking it up. And it's entirely possible that that anaconda is still dropping cargo, if it's still alive. Just picking up <clears throat> more cargo, one scoop at a time. How many do I have? I now have eight of this stuff. Eight pieces of gold. So... If I had to hope these guys uh, go in and just destroy the anaconda, which I certainly could have done, um, I might have gotten a nice bounty for it. But then, I wouldn't have nearly as much stuff to pick up. Because most of the cargo gets destroyed when... Um, <clears throat> when you uh, destroy the target. But, if you can cut open its cargo bay with a precision weapon, it will start dropping cargo all over the place. And that's what happened here. So this is one really lucrative way to be a sort of a pirate. Find a conflict already in progress and just be a vulture, really. 
I can still see laser fire happening. Oh shit. I'm being scanned. That could be bad. Alright. <clears throat> I'm getting out of here because... Yeah, it looks like the local security forces have caught on to my shenanigans. Charge up our jump drive and head over. We have 13 units of stolen gold. Selling, on, selling it on the black market for about roughly half normal retail price. Okay, we are coming up on Freeport with a load of stolen gold. Freeport is an anarchy system, so I need to pay attention to people like I see an anaconda hiding there. We are just going to slip in quietly. Remember I talked before about uh, managing your heat signature? Well, this is why. I'm assuming that these are players hiding out here. Scanning for people who might have a warrant. So I am just coasting in under inertia with my drives turned off. I popped a heat sink a little bit ago to get rid of all my excess heat, heat and now I am essentially undetectable to anyone in the system. Unless I get within a thousand meters of me or so and that's not going to happen before I get into the, into the station proper. Okay, we're close enough to ask for docking. Request granted. <clears throat> okay, he's headed in. I don't see anyone else, so... Should be good to turn my engines on. All right, <laughs> get in here. Docking pad 31. Now that I'm actually inside the station, I don't need to worry about anyone attacking me. Because station defenses will just shoot them. Now that we're docked, we'll pull up Starport Services and see what we can do about the stolen cargo. Uh, contacts. Black Market. I want to sell illegal goods. I'll sell all those. So there's a nice little haul. 58,000 credits. And uh, let's see how much it cost me. Oh, I don't need any repairs. Go to the old contacts, Pilots Federation. Aaron and Jurisdiction Bounty, 150 credits. So there we go. That's what it actually cost me to take care of that. And that is going to do it for Episode 7. Uh, I'll be taking a break for a couple of few weeks until the full beta comes out. Or at least a break from next place. I'll still be online if you trip across me. You know, flash your lights at me or shoot at me or something. Say hi. Um, until next time, which is going to be when full beta opens up with all the uh, beta level backers. Keep flying and stay shiny. I was born on a rock where the stars didn't shine. Now I soar like a leaf on the wind. Clouds were polluted, the sea filled with brine. Now I soar like a leaf on the wind. I swore to myself that above it I'd rise. Sail over the mountains and into the skies to see the stars brighter than man can devise. I'd soar like a leaf on the wind. Put me where I'll see stars.
so that I can see you and I'll soar like a leaf on the wind 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 Soar like a leaf